Good evening, I'm Kathy Suspanik for TV 34 News. Schneider Partnership 3, a North Jersey-based developer, is coming before the Neptune Township Board of Adjustment tomorrow night, applying for a 53-unit condominium on Fletcher Lake and the Boardwalk in Ocean Grove. Tonight we'll talk to a couple local residents and Camp Meeting Association President James Truitt about the proposal. Since its founding 115 years ago by a group of Methodist clergymen as a summer resort, Ocean Grove has grown into a year-round community of approximately 8,000 people, the largest surviving enclave of the camp meeting movement. Designated a National Historic Site, residents are concerned with preserving the historical beauty of the grove. But that beauty may be threatened if condominiums are built on a piece of property adjacent to Fletcher Lake and the Boardwalk on the south end of town. Camp Meeting Association President James Truitt talks about a special meeting tomorrow night which will bring this proposal before the Neptune Township Board of Adjustment. We're going to be taking the project uh, before the zoning uh, board tomorrow evening in order to get approval to build a condominium unit at the south end. I say we. We are actually only the people that will be leasing the property, but there is a project underfoot to try to develop a condominium unit at the south end. The proposed seven-story stucco structure has already been rejected by the Board of Architectural Review as inappropriate to the style and scale of Ocean Grove. But Truett says the complex will bring added revenue into the Camp Meeting Association. Well, we were trying to merchandise that piece of property to try to realize the best possible uh, utilization and the best possible financial return on the property. And one of the projects that came before us brought by Mr. Sanford Schneider with the objective of putting in a condominium unit at that location. Uh, we feel that this has a lot of advantages to Ocean Grove and to us because it will generate the kind of income that will help us to maintain the beachfront. Uh, the cost of the liability insurance on that piece of vacant land, the taxes and everything combined results in a burden that we can't continue to carry. We need the kind of income, the income that we can get from that piece of property in order to maintain the common grounds and keep it looking useful and pretty and something that the people of the community will enjoy. John Gross is a local resident and pharmacist who owns Nagel's Pharmacy, a business that has been in Ocean Grove for more than 50 years. I feel that in the long run it would change the town to which people would not come down here to in the summertime and it would not be as an attractive place to an attractive community to live in. And I feel that it would be, have adverse effects on the business community. I also think it will have adverse effects on the general community, uh, a loss of quality of life that has been established over the years. How would you feel about this project being put up right across the street from your home? Well, as a matter of fact, it is being put up across the street from my home, and I, I'm severely affected by it. Uh, would, I would have, no longer have a view of the lake and a view of the ocean front down towards Bradley Beach and, and below. Do you see any alternate to the project? At this time, from what I've seen of the, of the project, I, I don't see how that it could be adapted uh, at this time that would be acceptable to me and, and to many members of the community. The concern about the appearance is one that I think is bothering some of the people in this community that are not aware of the fact that the plans submitted to date have only been submitted for plans of zoning purposes, and therefore they are an outline of what is to come. And I have talked with Mr. Sanford Schneider and others that are involved with the project and they all assure us that there will be a lot of Victorian architecture involved and that the thing will be altered considerably from what the current appearance is at first glance. So I'd say overall, my reaction to the plan is very positive. Kevin Chambers is a local Ocean Grove resident who disagrees even with the changes. Well, actually, whether they change it and add any type of architectural Victorian styling to the structure still places it uh, out of place for the community. Uh, it, it shouldn't be used for, uh, for any type of private uh, function. It should be used for the public. The fact that Asbury Park themselves have uh, setback restriction for their structures, uh, it, it's appalling the fact that we haven't set that uh, in in action in Ocean Grove in Neptune Township. The fact that they intend on building this structure right on top of our dune area is just out of the question. I don't understand how the Department of Environmental Protection could even grant this application in the state. 
Once again, if you're interested in attending the Board of Adjustment meeting, it's tomorrow night at 7.30 at the Neptune Township Municipal Building. The Grove was founded back in 1869 out of a longing for spiritual refreshment. It was originally intended as a summer retreat for Methodists and their friends. Ocean Grove was known as one of the largest influential and steadfast camp meeting associations throughout the country. Good evening, I'm Kathy Suspanik for TV 34 News Magazine. And tonight I take a look at a proposal for a condominium complex at the south end of Ocean Grove. Since its founding over a century ago by a group of Methodist clergymen as a summer resort, Ocean Grove has grown into a year-round community of approximately 8,000 people. These local residents are the largest surviving enclave of the camp meeting movement. According to state records, Ocean Grove, which is part of Neptune Township, represents a rare example of a 19th century planned urban community. In December of 1975, Ocean Grove was declared a historic site by the state. In April of 1976, the National Park Service entered the Ocean Grove Camp Meeting Association District on the National Register of Historic Places. Ted Bell is an environmentalist who lives in Ocean Grove. He explains what this designation means. Well, it means that Ocean Grove is something unique in the rest of the United States. Um, we have this uh, large collection of authentic Victorian architecture. Uh, the state uh, people even made the comment that uh, this was better than Williamsburg simply because this does not have to be rebuilt. In other words, the fabric, the uh, structures were here. Uh, Ocean Grove is a planned community. It is very unique in that it was planned in the 19, 1870s, and uh, uh, it was a concept. Uh, it was created out of basically a, a, a pine barrens wilderness. Uh, the, uh, it has been fortunate that there have been very few changes in Ocean Grove over the last 100, let's say 110 years. And local residents are concerned with preserving the historical beauty of the grove. But that beauty may be threatened if condominiums are built on the only piece of vacant oceanfront property, which is adjacent to Fletcher Lake and the boardwalk on the south end of town. On Wednesday night, January the 8th, several hundred local residents jammed the Neptune Township Board of Adjustment meeting room for a public hearing on this proposal for a seven-story, 53-unit condominium project. Samford Schneider is an attorney who has represented real estate developers all his life. He is a principal developer with the Schneider Partnerships, a real estate investment company from Montclair. He explains how the condominium plan came about. Well, the Camp Meeting Association uh, made me aware of the site and their desire to um, have the site developed. We negotiated an option agreement. It was executed. And since then, I've been in the process of doing all of the legal and technical things required to get approval for the development, including approval from the Department of Environmental Protection, the CAFRA permit, as well as the local uh, zoning and planning approvals. This south end piece of property bordering Fletcher Lake was once a bathing pavilion with rows and rows of bathhouses and concession stands. The Camp Meeting Association owns the property on a 99-year lease. Well, we were trying to merchandise that piece of property to try to realize the best possible uh, utilization and the best possible financial return on the property. And one of the projects that came before us brought by Mr. Sanford Schneider with the objective of putting in a condominium unit at that location. Uh, we feel that this has a lot of advantages to Ocean Grove and to us because it will generate the kind of income that will help us to maintain the beachfront. Uh, the cost of the liability insurance on that piece of vacant land, the taxes and everything combined, results in a burden that we can't continue to carry. We need the kind of income, the income that we can get from that piece of property in order to maintain the common grounds and keep it looking useful and pretty and something that the people of the community will enjoy. Schneider purchased the property for approximately $780,000. That's about $15,000 per condo unit. According to project architect H. Robert Yeager of the RBA Group, a national architectural engineering firm in North Jersey, the building would stretch 225 feet facing Broadway and 75 feet along the boardwalk. A portion of the West End would border Fletcher Lake with a 15-foot walkway by the lake.
The typical Victorian-style home in Ocean Grove is three stories high. In order for Schneider to build the complex, certain variances have to be approved by the planning board. Specifically, the property on the south end as it relates to the proposed condominium project um, is actually uh, split up between two zoning districts. Uh, we have the HD Historic District Transient Residential Zone where the building proper is going to be located and the HD Recreation Zone where in fact uh, additional parking for the, the project will be located. Uh, both uses, the building and the parking, are going to require a use variance because neither is listed as a permitted use in either one of those districts. Uh, there are additionally variances uh, for height the maximum height uh, permitted in that district, the transient residential, is 35 feet. This building will be in excess of six stories, and uh, that is about it at this point. The Board of Adjustment has met preliminarily on the project, and the planner for the Board of Adjustment will make further recommendations as far as what variances are needed. The project cannot be built until the Planning Board uh, grants preliminary and final site plan approval. And the Architectural Review Board will have an opportunity to exercise its power as an advisory uh, body to review the architectural plan and all of the uh, uh, materials going into the building. And we hope that the um, building, once designed, will be um, uh, um, approved by all of the people as being uh, consistent with the architectural ambiance of the community. Right now, the, the um, primary issue is whether uh, the zoning board feels that uh, there are um, sufficient reasons to grant a variance for the development of the site into a multifamily condominium development. So that legal issue has to be resolved first. And then we get into architectural design. And I'm very, very comfortable with our architect's ability to come up with a design. The Board of Architectural Review is an advisory board to help residents preserve and recognize historical property. On December 20th of 1985, the board sent Mr. Schneider a letter stating that they voted against the South End condominium proposal. Um, the people on the Architectural Review Board uh, were shown the design only as a conceptual design. We have every intention of going back to them when the, when the project is fully designed to give them an opportunity to, to look at it in terms of its, um, its character and it, the elements in the building and the materials used to construct it. Um, I, 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 there may be some uh, negative feelings about the project on that board, which are unfo unfortunate and not understandable in light of the fact that they recently approved uh, the North End project, uh, which, is also, which is higher. Uh, which is also made uh, of modern materials. Um, and uh, uh, my understanding is that uh, there are new people on the board, so it's a matter of personal preference. But quite honestly, the, um, uh, the uh, building, when it's finished, will be consistent with the architecture of Ocean Grove. It will have to be made of modern building materials in order to meet Boca Code and it has to be fireproof, therefore we can't build a wooden building or use wooden shingles or things of that nature. We have to build a building using modern materials and try to make it look Victorian. Well, as far as the floor plans are concerned and the basic outline and how it's situated on the plot, we think they've used an excellent utilization of the piece of property. As far as the height is concerned, it's only three feet higher than is currently zoned for condominiums and it's some 10 feet or more lower than would be uh, zone had that been a hotel. So therefore, as far as the physical dimensions are concerned, we're very pleased with what they've done. The concern about the appearance is one that I think is bothering some of the people in this community that are not aware of the fact that the plans submitted to date have only been submitted for plans of zoning purposes, and therefore they are an outline of what is to come. And I have talked with Mr. Sanford Schneider and others that are involved with the project, and they all assure us that there will be a lot of Victorian architecture involved and that the thing will be altered considerably from what the current appearance is at first glance. So I'd say overall my reaction to the plan is very positive. Well actually whether they change it and add any type of architectural Victorian styling to the structure still places it uh, out of place for the community. Uh, it, it shouldn't be used for uh, for any type of private uh, 
function it should be used for the public the fact that asbury park themselves have a uh, setback restriction for their structures uh it, it's appalling the fact that we haven't set that uh in in action in Ocean Grove and Neptune Township. The fact that they intend on building this structure right on top of our dune area is just out of the question. I don't understand how the Department of Environmental Protection could even grant this application in the state. Well, there's a scale here. Uh, you can look around you and you really don't see anything more than a three-story, uh, four-story building. Now, uh, down at the, the north end, we're having a five to six-story building, but uh, that was there before. Uh, uh, you don't want to put in a uh, uh, two twin towers here. Uh, I mean, you know, it just is out of scale um, with Ocean Grove. Now, uh, since night, seven years ago, the Board of Architectural Review uh, uh, has been reviewing all of the uh, changes in Ocean Grove. Now, um, at the present time, there, there seems to be a lot of frustration uh, among various groups in Ocean Grove, uh, and I think uh, in Neptune, uh, for uh, some decisions that have been made uh, in the past. Um, perhaps it's time that we look at some fine-tuning or some evaluation of just exactly uh, what do uh, we want in Ocean Grove. Now, uh, Ocean Grove, like I said before, is known throughout the United States. And it, uh, do, what, what do we want here in the next 10 years or for the year 2000? Uh, perhaps it's time that we think about studying uh, some of the decisions that have been made, uh, working more uh, with the people here and with the local governing officials. This, ha this again, it just seems that there's frustration building in Ocean Grove.